Hello there, it's Catherine from Moonstar Lodge. As many of you know, I am a licensed minister, a moderator of Wolf Island Indigenous Interfaith Church, a practicing shaman, medicine woman, and I've been doing this work with tarot since university in the 70s and 80s, where archetypes and Jungian concepts of collective consciousness um, prevailed when I was doing my degrees. So I have a collection now exceeding um, 1,100 decks, and I've been asked if I will uh, do a video about my space, and I'm happy to do that in the very near future. So I'd like to discuss this particular moon cycle before I get into the cards. We used to do just new moon and full moon videos twice a month, but now we're doing weekly videos. So I try to incorporate the new moon and full moon issues into the weekly videos instead of making them a separate entity. Also this week, we are filming um, a video on how you cleanse new decks, how you protect and connect with a new deck, and protocols that <clears throat> I have used in all my years. And uh, so look for that probably around about Wednesday the 11th or, or maybe the 12th of November, but you'll get a notification if you're subscribed. Anyway, on November 4th, we entered into the 12th moon cycle. And here on the medicine wheel, the 12th moon cycle is just about halfway through the season. There are 13 moon cycles in a given year. We start the cycles all over again at winter solstice. So we're halfway between autumn equinox, winter solstice, and 12th moon cycle is right about here. And the name of the grandmother of this moon cycle is called Gives Praise Woman. She is the mother of all acts of thanksgiving and the keeper of abundance, the guardian of ceremony and ritual, the keeper of magic. Got to take the glasses off here. The mother of encouragement and the guardian of celebration, the wisdom keeper of the art of giving and receiving. She teaches us how to return thanks for the abundance we need before it arrives, making space to receive it. How to celebrate every victory in life with joy, ours as well as the accomplishments of others. How to use right attitudes to create magical changes in the self. How to create abundance through praise, giving, and receiving. How to be grateful for the truth. So, being the guardian of abundance, ceremony, and ritual, that gives you a really big key here that gives praise woman, is giving praise for what she's asked for and is manifesting of... Um, the universe, call it what you will, the great mystery, uh, the field of all possibilities. Um, and then she releases it. She releases it and accepts and gives praise for and just awaits its arrival. This is shamanic behavior and manifesting behavior. So this particular series of new moons and full moons up to the end of the year is quite important. So November 4th was a super new moon. And on the uh, 19th, we have a uh, micro full moon and a partial lunar eclipse. So that's a day of ritual and profound manifestation. When we get a micro full moon, it's in apogee, meaning it's the farthest away it can be from Earth in its orbit. And that's the perfect point in the shamanic traditions I was trained in. You have no obstacles, no energetic blockage to move between what we call the tonal, which is the thing that we 
everything has a name. We can see it, we can touch it, this table, a planet, that light, this camera, my cards. They're known, they exist in the physical. The field of all possibilities, or the Nagy wall, is where the shaman goes to, to uh, manifest. So this, is, this coming up moon is a manifesting moon. This particular reading covers up to the 14th, and then the next reading, a week from now, will talk about how you do ritual for manifesting in addition to the cards. But right now, you know, you need to be thinking about what it is because all the rest of the moons, uh, the next um, super new moon is December 4th. And just before winter solstice, we have another micro full moon. So there's a lot of opportunity here to ride the wave of um, manifesting behavior whether you're a trained shaman or not, it's immaterial. We all manifest and create our reality. So let's go to today's reading and I will show you the decks being used. This is Tarot of the Abyss by Anne Turian. I'm using the Maybe Lenormand. I'm using the Shaman's Dream, which I just love, by Dr. Alberto Violdo. I'm using the Dotem cards are the um, Jamie Sam's, the, just the mini version of the Medicine cards, which I've had since 1989, and um, the Judith Pintar deck, which I use virtually every reading. So, let's go at this. So I'm not using these cards right now. I'm starting with the actual tarot. When I pulled these cards, three of them were in protection or reverse position. And I normally I don't read reversals on this deck. There's only two decks in my collection of 1100 that Spirit has advised not to read reversals. And yet Anne Turian has put reversals in. So I'm going to speak of them as if there is a protection factor so that you can be advised just to be a little extra cautious. We have our puppy playing in the background because she has a little bit of anxiety when we... Uh... <laughs> and there she is. Good thing the camera's on the cards because she's being very silly. Um, anyway, so... Back to the reading. That's the banging you hear is the puppy. So we have the Two of Pentacles. This is, this is the significator card for this reading. The Two of Pentacles was in protection position. So it's a reminder to keep your perspectives in such a way that you remain in balance. It's very much a card of balance. Um, you need to start out this week, start out tomorrow, balanced and flexible. It's, it's, a car, it's a card of flexibility. The Nine of Cups followed, and it also was in protection position. So here we are, relishing the um, fruits of our labor, loving life, loving all that we have, the abundance, the emotional stability, the artistic creativeness. These two were in protection. So if you don't stay balanced, you won't feel this. And that's really uh, the lay of the land. But the middle card here is the sun. And this is a stunning card, one of my favorite sun cards. So this brings um, bounty, light, love, success, happiness, this, these are all cards of happiness as long as you are mindful. And really what protection or reversals mean is to be mindful of the shadow that could creep in if you don't stay focused. This is an interesting card here. This is the King of Pentacles. So he has bounty, uh, wealth, knowledge. He's very 
uh, centered. This is an earth card. So this is building more concepts of abundance. This is a card, the Three of Cups. You see two women and the hand of the friend reaching in. So by the weekend, we're looking at connecting and it is moving into the um, festivity season as we move closer and closer to solstice. And what's interesting here, at the very end, there's an element of the sense of justice. Um, this is perhaps hard to see on camera, but in justice's eye, are the scales. So you will see justice done and perhaps the beginning is telling us here that you are aware that justice is coming and by the end of the, the weekend, by the 14th, you will feel that justice has been served. So what's clarifying here? We have the uh, 47, number 47 card in the Maybe Lenormand, which is fire and comfort, comfort and energy and a sense of something beginning, but definitely the intention is comfort in the balance. Mountain is a card of obstacles, possibly adversaries. Um, in indigenous thinking, which is not exactly the same as Lenormand, this is a very comforting card. And in the context of the rest of them, I see that this represents actually an awareness of something. And by being aware and prepared, the obstacle doesn't manifest. With the sun, there are thunderclouds. Again, always looking at the balance. You have to have the shadow. So the thundercloud, the thunder beings, again in our tradition, represent change noise and change, and that's just fine. This card, which unfortunately I put down upside down, is the anchor card. This king of pentacles would definitely be an anchor. Whether this is a partner or an aspect of yourself, it doesn't really matter. Um, you'll know what this represents as the week unfolds, and um, that's important. The three of cups, Friendship, bear. Bear is friendship. Good fortune. So that's, that's fabulous. And with justice, again, we have a different version of the sun card. Different deck. So clearly, this is a week to be optimistic. This is a week to just stay centered and focused. I get the impression from spirit that the only reason to um, have protection cards was to just remind all of us, because this is a collective reading that will resonate for most people, the um, balance will be maintained and this, there will be a sunny outlook as long as we stay focused. As they used to say, keep your eye on the prize. So who are the dotums that walk with us this week? Well, Buffalo. Buffalo sits in the north on the wheel. We are coming into winter and his time to protect the wheel is from winter solstice to spring equinox. But Buffalo is here, the great provider. When a buffalo was slaughtered, every bit, right down to every ten tenon, sinew, bone, even the brain for tanning, all of that was used. Buffalo is the great provider. We have whale energy. Buffalo represents the spiritual portion of the wheel, and whale represents connecting, communicating, spiritual vibes, psychic connection. Rabbit. Rabbit indicates um, knowing when to be still, knowing when to change your color, for the rabbits change their color, many species in the winter. Um, and on the card, it says here, banish fear, move beyond fear, stagnation, and listen to your heart. So don't be fearful. Don't bring fear in. You know, if a rabbit is startled, it will freeze. And if it's in great distress, it cries. 
Um, whale is spiritual wisdom, acknowledging spiritual wisdom and acknowledge, acknowledging your connection to source. The shaman cards here are many masks. Many masks means, in this context, the authentic self. You need to make sure that you don't have masks on. Justice comes, actually, by being authentic. You create a simpler life by being truly yourself, manifesting your desires. The Dragon's Horde we've had in another recent reading, and this is protection and protecting the future. This, this is a, a baby dragon here. Uh, incubating. So we are protecting the future by what we manifest because this is the time of Give Praise Woman and she is the manifester. And the final card here is an interesting one. This is the Woodwives card and this is about adaptability. So spirit, the, the shamanic ancestors are asking us to be flexible and adaptable as well as mindful to create what it is we are manifesting, which looks apparently to be justice and bound, uh, uh, bounty and just, it's positive and it's an extraordinarily positive reading. Now, in terms of these ancestor cards, these are the shaman cards, these are the ancestor cards. The first one I pulled here was the in, uh, in the South and Stillness. The stillness card requires of us to do the mindful practices. These are thunder clouds. These are the clouds that are here. In stillness, we hear the thunder beings, and that's an important thing to know. Um, so we need this. This is a very active week, but we also need to maintain some stillness and connect with our ancestors. This card, card of the earth, is transcendence, and this is very much this brontosaurus. You know, we move past the time of, of dinosaurs because things on the earth transcended. Our transcendence is, is the same as really this king of pentacles, knowing we are transcending something with stability, um, bounty, warmth, nurturing. And finally, transcendence in the north is transformation. Um, we go from the transcendent sorry of the earth card to the north card with transformation and this is um, an incredibly powerful card in its simplicity and it's referencing here the waves of spiritual energy we have to transform something. We are manifesting transformation in our lives. So you can flip the camera, Brian. Uh, again, uh, an extraordinarily beautiful reading. And um, I, I hope I've done it justice. Anyway, I didn't put my spider back in my hair, although my spider got uh, fan mail, fan comments. So maybe the spider will come back in a future video. But watch for our discussion video this week. Uh, I'm going to start to introduce more series of videos on, on techniques in reading and techniques in managing cards, introducing cards. All right, please leave a comment. I love to read your comments. Hit the thumbs up, the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And I look forward to working with you in the future. Miigwech. Oh, oh.